Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today we're going to be talking about some of my favorite romance books that I've been picking up recently, which are monster romances. So I love monster romances, they're just so entertaining and hot and fun and just like a little step over from alien romances and I adore alien romances. For me personally and how I categorize monster romances is that it's different from an alien romance. So alien romances are its own like genre in my head and monster romances are something entirely different. Like I know that some alien romances have like monster alien creatures in them, but I categorize those solely as alien romances, if that makes sense. So these are just monster romances. So none of them are sci-fi related. Most of them are either set like in our world or in a fantasy land, or they're just like paranormal romances. So first is an author that I want to mention. I've been loving her books and I'm almost with her backlist. I just have two more to read. It's Lila Fay. She kind of got popular around Halloween time, I believe last year, because she came out with this book called Jack. Um, <laughs> and everyone's talking about how insane and bizarre it was. It's like this girl summons um a pumpkin demon guy and he has the head of a jack-o-lantern <laughs> so i thought this was fine i gave it three stars like it was funny sorry i have an eyelash and entertaining um but i've read better ones by her you know but this is the one that kind of like got her on the map and got me like introduced to her my favorite books by her are the silver fury series the first book being the orc's bride so this is an orc romance trilogy all uh surrounding the same couple so each book in the series is about the same couple our hero is an orc warrior chieftain guy and our heroine is this tiny but strong um human woman in the first book our heroine in here she's basically out to kill all orcs because she's the only survivor of her family because these orcs have killed her entire family except for her and um her job now is to serve orcs that have taken over the land, like serve them food and drink and everything. Um, but then the orcs that took over her land get taken over by a, a rivaling orc clan. And our hero here is the leader of that clan or the warriors or whatever. He knows that the emperor of the orcs is trying to set him up with his daughter. He hates her, he cannot stand her. He does not want to be shackled to this orc woman. And so he's like, you know what? I guess I got to get married before I'm summoned back to court. And so he sees this human woman like standing up to some of the orcs when they were like rude and kind of like gropey towards her. And he's immediately very intrigued and tries to convince her to come back to the empire with him. And on their way, he's gonna try to convince her to be his wife. And so book one and book two follow like kind of like that plot line. And I haven't read book three yet, but book three, it's kind of like a big time jump. The plot line for it just sounds so good. I'm so excited. So yeah, these orc romances are totally worth the read. I love it. They're hot. They're fun. Like, it's so good. <laughs> and then Lila Faye has another orc book just called Orc. It's like a novella that's like, I want to say like 40 to 15 pages. I don't remember the length of it, but basically our heroine is on this website that, um, like matches like cosplayers or something and she's really wanting to find like more people who like cosplaying as like orcs and stuff like she has a dream of like getting with an orc so she wants to get with an orc cosplayer but her hero here meets up with her and he's a real orc he's not a cosplayer <laughs> and so she's just like in awe of him and thinks his costume is so cool when in actuality it's not really a costume he's actually a real orc <laughs> and then the last lila fay that i want to mention really fast is his huge horns which is another very short monster novella every year in this fantasy land um in this village one woman is offered up to spend like a certain amount of days with this uh monster um that like kind of like protects the land and in exchange like he'll protect the land if they send these women um and they'll stay with them for three days and i think he's trying to get them pregnant so he can have an heir but it's never like worked out at all um and the women always come back after three days you know our heroine is lily and her sister has been the woman picked this year and so her sister is like distraught and very upset she does not want to be picked to go get with a monster you know and so lily's like you know what i gotta protect my younger sister i'm going to pretend to be her and go in her place so she does and then she has some fun with a red monster <laughs> um and she may or may not be the one person he's finally been able to have a baby with <laughs> it's very short and fun very entertaining next i have the witch's wolves by ellie may mcgregor this is a little red riding hood retelling and our heroine manon is kind of like being persecuted against by her village because they found out that she was in bed with a woman and like in this land if you gay we're gonna kill you essentially 
which sucks. Um, and so she comes across this cabin while she's running away and like locks herself inside of it, crouches down against the door, like tries to hide and hopes that no one will find her. But there are two beings, creatures living in said cabin. Um, they're kind of like wolf humanoid creatures, um, kind of like a werewolf, but mixed with a human. So like, I think they like walk on two legs, like it's kind of like a wolf and a human mixed together. And um, that's one thing in here that I was a little confused by, like the descriptiveness of what they looked like wasn't really in the book, but that's how I pictured them in my brain. <laughs> they uh, are a couple themselves. They're two of these wolf, wolf humanoid pe uh, people and they're mates themselves and so when they meet Manon they're very intrigued by her and so it's kind of like a throuple situation between the three of them. This was so fun. Um, I've never read I don't think a Little Red Riding Hood retelling so I really liked that and then of course it was just really hot. <laughs> It's only like 50 pages, so knock yourself out. I also have No Getting Over You by ML Eliza. This one, I loved it. I loved this one. <laughs> And it's bizarre sounding, like it is, okay? So our heroine in here is like hiking through some mountains and she ends up falling in like a cavern in the mountains. And little does she know, she falls into the cavern of this ogre. Sorry if the camera angle changed for a second, I got a phone call. <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, she falls into this cave and there's this ogre and he's big. Like he's like kind of like a giant essentially. And he finds this girl unconscious on his floor and he immediately like claims that he's his. And it's so cute. There's like a language barrier between the two of them too. So they're trying to communicate with each other, which I love the language barrier trope. I love it so much. <laughs> the two of them like fall for each other despite them not being able to communicate 100%. And um, it's so good. <laughs> it's really good. I loved this. It was so fun like i love monster romances because like they're just different from the sometimes boring contemporary romances that's why i don't solely read contemporary romances because it's boring to me it is um and so these are just so fun like they get you out of your box and it's kind of like a breath of fresh air even though they're <laughs> monsters i read this last year and i honestly can't stop thinking about it i really want to read it just because like it was really cute. Like you wouldn't think that a monster wanted to be cute, but our hero here is so stinking cute. Next I have His Darkest Craving by uh, Tiffany Roberts. This is kind of like a shadow demon. So our heroine in here is like rented out this cabin on like the edge of the woods to work on some writing stuff. And she's a writer. She works on a book or something. And um, there's this monster in the woods um and he's kind of like this shadowy demon and he's only able to be like get in his human form like once every year or once every hundred years or something like that i can't remember and that's coming up really soon i think maybe no is he able to get in his human form every halloween or something like that i don't know but anyway when he sees our heroine, she's the first human he's ever seen that he hasn't killed. Like he's just killed everybody that's come to his woods. And he sees this girl in the cabin. He's like, what? Like I, he's like totally enchanted by her and is mad at himself that he can't kill her. Um, <laughs> so the two of them fall in love, even though he's like a shadow demon. It doesn't have like a full body. <laughs> I love Tiffany Roberts. The writing is amazing. So the writing in here was great a book that really reminded me of his darkest craving is little green vines by Britt andrews except it's sapphic so i heard one here she lives at the edge of this woods um in a cabin and she's growing like this vegetable garden and there's a creature that lives in the woods and she immediately sees our heroine and lures her into the woods to make her to make her hers and like she wants her as her mate and um it's it's really interesting because she can kind of like shapeshift some of her body to like be whatever she wants and to give the heroine pleasure um and she has a tail and um it's really fun <laughs> i like this one it really reminded me of his darkest craving and again just another fun monster romance to escape into next i have deceived by the gargoyles by lillian lark this is probably like the longest book on this list but it's really really worth the read our heroine here is a witch and she goes to this matchmaker for paranormal creatures and she really wants to find like her mate in life she ends up getting matched to this guy named elliot and um, they go on a couple dates and she's starting to fall for him, but Elliot's keeping a secret from her that he already has like two mates, like two other mates. And Elliot wants her to be a part of their like 
grouping of people, their group mating. Um, and yeah, the three heroes in here, they're all gargoyle creatures and they can put on a human glamor when they're out in public, but most of the time they're in their gargoyle form. Um, and it's really fun. The three of them together with her, so good so good we have ruby dixon we have the half orcs maiden bride and i loved this one our heroine in here she is a taller and a little bit plus size and um she sticks out a little bit from her family because all of her sisters are already married have husbands on their way to having kids they're very petite women whereas she kind of takes after her father a little more with being a little taller stronger bigger and um she's not been able to find a husband even though on the outside she might not look like it but on the inside she's like a girly girl wants husband a marriage like everything of the sort like she wants frills and sewing and does all these girly things and like she's breaking the mold for the stereotype of what a girly girl can look like you know um which i loved <laughs> uh like love whatever you want to love do whatever you want to do it doesn't matter what you look like on the outside and i loved that and so she's been waiting for a husband she calls herself a spinster essentially because she's an older age in this fantasy land and um no one's asked but then her father comes home one day and it's like hey i found you a husband let's go to him and so they travel all the way to her new to be husband's keep and her father never told her that he's actually an orc and um he kind of just leaves her there on his doorstep and yeah they go through some marriage customs he's like the sweetest bean ever like i love him he is such a cinnamon roll cute hero you wouldn't think that an orc is but he is. He is so patient and kind and loving to the heroine and I love it so much. And of course, Ruby Dixon's writing is amazing. And like this story is great. It takes place in the same world as her other fantasy books, but has zero correlation whatsoever to them. But it has some of the same marriage customs as The King's Spinster Bride, which is my favorite, one of my favorite books of all time. So I love this one. And I really hope that Ruby Dixon writes more orc romances. Lastly, I have The Widow and the Wolf by Adrian Blue. This one is a very short. I want to say it's like 40 pages long. In this world, um, I think it's like Earth, but people know that monsters exist and like monsters and humans kind of like live day to day lives like together. And so our hero in here owns this factory he's the boss of this factory and it's kind of like this wolf creature he's very scary on the cover like i don't really want to look at the cover honestly <laughs> he scares me um but yeah he's this wolf creature and um he's been pining for one of his employees for a while who is our heroine and she is a widow she's been widowed recently and she's been pining after her boss for a while too and she ends up staying late one day after work and um they finally reveal their feelings for one another and they have some fun <laughs> um and yeah this was really short and sweet i know that there are more books in like this monster romance like series um and so there are just short monster romance novellas that i really want to dive into um so yeah but anyways there you have it those are some monster romance recommendations for you let me know down below if you have any recommendations for me i'd love to know and also let me know if you've read any of these books or if you plan to and if you don't feel like commenting any of those things you can leave me the um red monster looking emoji down below but anyways thank y'all so so much for watching i will see y'all soon in my next one bye y'all